don't know why I keep trying to make this a surprise when you can see the title and thumbnail, but today we are going to be unboxing a palletful pack. Thank you to Palletful for sending me this pack. If you want to get your own Palletful pack monthly art subscription box full of goodies, check out a link in the description. Let's get into it. Let's just see what we've got. I mean, we've got little worm doodles, of course, but let's see, is there a list of supplies we can follow before I start jumping in here? And there is, we have our powerful, powerful, powerful pack prompt and challenge, as well as a list of supplies for the premiere pack. Let's just put that over here. I don't know why I put the box on this side. I'm right-handed. This is probably going to get in the way. So because I like to try the supplies as we go, let's go ahead and see if we've got some paper and it looks like we do so we can test our supplies as we go. Oh my gosh. And it looks like we've got our little worm doodles stuck in, in here. Um, ex excuse me? So it looks like our paper is the B paper, six by six, 93 pound, super deluxe mixed media pad. Ooh, shiny and lots of paper. I love that they give you so much paper. Don't tempt me with another 3D art situation. So let's just get our book over here for testing our supplies. And our first, I know this is a water brush, so we can't do anything with that yet. Let's take these guys out. So this is the Graphics Aqua Pens Metropolitan Six Set. Let's open them up. They're dual felt tips, contour paint, and flexible brush dyed based and water soluble, especially suited for use on watercolor paper. Good thing they gave us mixed media paper. <laughs> Let's test them out. It doesn't look like they have official names, so I'm going to name them myself. We have Cool Gray, uh, Sunflower Yellow, <laughs> Turquoise. It's turquoise. I'm going to call this one Cloudy Blue. Here, we can call this one Sky Blue. We've got Black. Sometimes I get confused if it's a water-based marker or if it's actually water color, but it says they're watercolor. All right, let's see. Of course, I'm starting off with the gray, so I'm not really sure what I can see. The amount of ghosting always just leaves me disappointed, I suppose. I feel like you can always depend on black to do well, but there's still a little bit of ghosting where the border is where you put the stroke. They don't work so bad, they're all right. I do like the colors. They're very blue, very cool. I like that. Okay, what's next? Oh, right. <laughs> they included a water brush specifically for this and then I go and use my own brush. I'm a dingus. All right, so I filled my barrel with water. If you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. Let's assemble our brush. And there you go. Then you can brush. Oh, and squeeze it and have water fly out the side. Okay, what what do we have next? Let's let's dig in here. Okay, we've got more graphics aqua pens. This time we have the Mega Mash 12 set, which means more colors. Get out of here, wormies. Oh my gosh, you guys, we have a dookie green. I'm excited. Okay, let's get to swatching. Again, I will name them uh, black number two, a soft dirt brown. This is of course, your grass green. Oh, this color? Oh, don't mind me. This is the best color of the pack. Yeah, this is definitely sap green. Heck yes. Next up, ooh, is this green gold? I love green gold. It's kind of like a dookie yellow. And I love that. Is this, this looks like a darker, yeah, definitely a more saturated color from that, what I call it? Cloudy blue? Sky gray? Blue gray? Blue sky? Cloudy sky? Cloudy blue? Hmm. Again, this is a different blue, so this definitely looks like more of a sky blue than the previous one. We'll rename this one to baby blue, and this one can be sky blue. Oh gosh. Now this is the kind of purple I really don't like. So I'm calling this one, I don't like you purple. A nice basic pink, so I'm going to call that one basic pink. <laughs> Ooh, I like this red. It's kind of pinkish. That's really cute. I'm going to call this one rosy pink. Ooh, we have an orange. I'm going to call this one uh, orange juice. And lastly, we have a light yellow. I'm going to call this one um, don't look into the sun yellow. All right, we have swatched our other 12 colors. Let's use our water brush this time to activate them. 
Yo, if you've got some watercolor brush tips for me in the comments, please. Am I just squeezing too hard? Am I just a too hard kind of lady? Too hard? Call me a too hard kind of a lady. Epic fail. Can I get an epic fail in the title of the video, please? Thank you. Biggest artist fail yet. This subscription box ended my career, not clickbait. And I will be quitting art. <laughs> There are some fun colors in this pack. I do appreciate it, though I do really like the first pack. It looked like you had a nice cohesive palette. The rest of this is just kind of like, do you want every color? Here you go. What I do like about these sort of pens is that you can say I want a less bright purple so I can get purple and then mix like this dark blue in there. You can use black, but black's just gonna make it look sad, I think. And you've got this sort of purpley blue color that isn't super obnoxious, though I probably put too much blue in there. And also I'm destroying the paper because it's not watercolor paper, it's mixed media paper. <laughs> okay, okay, I promise I won't be super salty through the rest of the video. But it looks like we're supposed to have a Sakura Micron Perm 0.35 millimeter pen. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, there it is, we found it. Ooh, look at this gray. What? Microperm. I've never heard of this. That's pretty cool. Pen. Nah. Boop. What I love about Sakura Micron pens is that they dry really quickly so that you can use water on them and not worry about them smudging your art. So it's only been less than 30 seconds. Let's see if it's actually dried yet. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, I love it. I love it. Boop, boop, boop. Look at that, all the water in the world couldn't mess up that line art. All right, we have all of our art supplies. Let's see if there's a theme we wanna work with or not. I'm not sure. We have Metropolitan, Office, Future, and Sky. Sky might be kind of fun. So yeah, we're gonna to get to sketching in our multiple page book and then see what we wanna draw. Okay, before we get sketching, look at all of these ding dang markers over here. This is a whole dang collection of markers. That is crazy, the amount of markers they give you. That being said, let's get into sketching. As you can see, the paper was really warped from being wet, so I really don't think this is the best for watercolor. This is mixed media. And they said many times that this is good to use watercolor paper with, so I don't know why they gave us mixed media. That aside, I mean, look, it went through. It, it, it went through and you can see the buckling. I want to love them, but I don't know why these box people give you supplies that don't work together. It, it's just very confusing. Oh, that, you know what? I'm an idiot. <laughs> this said shy, not sky. All right, look at that, we have a circle. So the first theme is metropolitan. That would be cool to make a city because uh, metropolitan's the, the whole deal. But the city isn't going to be normal buildings. Wow, what is that word? <laughs> I thought it would actually be kind of cool to do like tree stumps or something and I don't know, have bugs. I'm, I'm gonna do my best not to do ants. I guess I'm just jumping right into drawing something instead of, um, you know, sketching out ideas. I guess that's the mood we're in today. <laughs> I'm okay with like winging it. Hey, wing, get it? Bugs, wing, hey, I'm sorry. This building is going to be a little bit more artistic and it's going to be slanted. Ooh, what a cool modern building. We need one that's like super tall and stacked. Does that make any sense? You know how like they, they're they stacked. I explained more in that sentence. Okay, here I'll show you. So we have one level and then we have, it's like a cake. It's like a tiered cake. Things are, I was kind of measuring the windows to make sure that they were like perfectly aligned with each other, but honestly, sometimes it's more fun to have them super uneven and it gives it more personality. At least that's what I'm saying because I don't feel like measuring it. <laughs> no, it really is though. It's cute and charming and more, it's got that handmade feel when things aren't perfectly uh, measured out. 
Let's do a building that is tall and thin, and then it has a beehive at the top of it. Because why not? Wait, this makes it look like the bees are huge though, because this building is far away. Oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> I don't want those to be giant bees, because imagine if those bees came closer to the viewer. They would be huge. Oh my gosh, this is adorable. And I feel like I need a building for each bug. What's a spider? What would a spider building be? Would it be two buildings next to each other and there's a spider web in between? I'm sorry, spiders, that does not look good. Ooh, and instead of like a widow mark or that like uh, hourglass thing, they could have a bow tie. Oh, look at them. This is cute. I really like the bee one. The bee one's my favorite. Okay, look, you know I have to do it. You know I have to draw an ant. He's like, yo, what up? Welcome to the bug city. This is where Casey banned us all to. <laughs> yeah, this is really cute. And I'm kind of excited about it. So let's um, use our nifty... Oh, wait, what's the difference? Hold on. I'm really curious of the difference between a Sakura Micro Perm and a Sakura Micron. Okay, so it looks like the Micro Perm is not archival. Oh, here's a good one. They can write on glossy paper, which Microns I've noticed are not good at. So the applications for the perms are crafts, test tubes, beakers, and x-rays, photographic film, labels for cans and jars, engineering templates and rulers, and back of photographs. So it looks like this pen is a lot more technical, whereas the Micron is archival journals, illustrations, cartoons, manga, freehand drawings, legal documents, sketching with watercolors, rubber stamping, and fabric design. I don't really understand why this was included. This seems more of like a crafty, like it says engineered for precision. This looks like this is more for things. <laughs> Whereas the Micron is for art. What the heck? It says writes on diamonds, glass, wood, cellophane, plastic, and glossy. Diamonds? <laughs> I'm not trying to write on a diamond. There is an art video for you. Art on a diamond? Not clickbait. Okay, anyways, that was a um, tangent. Let's just get back to what we were doing, shall we? Okay, so I'm really disappointed. I tried not to be a big poo-pooer and I told you that I wasn't going to be negative anymore. But to be honest, this pen was not meant for this paper. This pen is spreading and the paper is it is absorbing and spreading the ink. So I'm just a little sad. That's okay, we're gonna push through. Okay, I'm sorry that I'm being so quiet. I'm just really confused about this marker. You know how you use Sharpies on paper and they kind of like spread out a little bit and they're like fuzzy? Look, I need to do a test really quick. I'm just like really confused and sad. Okay, so this is our Microperm. You can see, right? That it kind of spreads out and is kind of fuzzy. This is, by the way, this is the same size, 0.3. And this one's also a 0.3. So do you see the difference? How this one isn't fuzzy? It's probably hard to tell, but there's definitely a difference between that line and this line. That one is like fuzzy and it spreads out even just a little bit. It's just really frustrating because my whole illustration, it's just kind of fuzzy. Like my ant illustrations aren't fuzzy like that. So I'm just, just makes me a little sad. I also might be really stupid. I could, this could be a user error, you know? I don't know. I don't claim to be perfect or smart. <laughs> I sure am having a struggle with getting <laughs> some of these uh, lines like straight vertical, so it's a good thing that they are made out of trees because trees aren't perfectly vertical and that's definitely my excuse. They're cute, look at them. Oh my gosh, I love these little guys. Well, if there's one thing I can be positive about, it's the bees. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Her. We gotta break that border. Okay, the art supplies might be making me sad, but at least I'm having fun 
with this illustration, right? Oh my gosh! I love how they get smaller as they go to the background. Maybe I should draw some really small ones back here. I had my mini rant. Now I'm ready to make some cute, fun art. Wow, I wish I knew how to draw a straight line. Wow. You know when a non-artist comes up to you and they're like, I can't even draw a straight line. I'm like, yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, me too on that one. <laughs> Anyways, really quick, I'm going to add some wood details to these buildings and then I will get back to you guys to watercolor. Okay, I have erased all the pencil and I think I already know what sort of color scheme I want to do because we do have so many wonderful blues. Maybe not so much the greens. We have lots of blues, which I really like. And we do have some oranges and yellows, which complement the blues. I think it would be maybe some purple. I think it would be really fun to do what well, we need brown for. Anyways, because we have so many blues and oranges, I think it'd be really lovely to do like a night city sky. We can have like a sunset from dark blue to light blue and then have all of the brown trees fade off into like a lovely little blue in the background. And of course, to complement the blue, we have our yellows and oranges for the windows and the lights. So, oh, and the bees. I'm very excited. So yeah, let's start coloring it. Um, I'm scared, but I think I can do it. So because I'm a little bit scared, I will be using a watercolor palette to put these colors into so that it'll probably make it a little bit easier to pick them up and then use because I'm just not used to these. I'm scared. I love that sound, oh my god. And then I will use the brush to brush it on. Love it. <laughs> so far so good, though it's not super wet, so I'm afraid it's gonna dry really fast. I, I think my um, scaredness is coming from the paper. The paper doesn't seem to be able to handle a lot of water, so I'm just kind of like scared. But here we go! So I'm just going to do this technique for the front one since I do want this one to be the lightest. And as they fade into the background, they'll get darker. I promise you guys, I do look up tutorials when I get art supplies I don't know how to use. Wow, I'm destroying the paper. I just straight up don't know what I'm doing. All right, well, I colored in one brown tree. You get a nice effect. It looks like it's going off into the distance for sure. I would like to add blue or purple or something to shade them to make them as if they are fading into the distance. I'm just, I don't quite have a grasp on mixing colors with these uh, markers. So we'll see how it works out when I get there. <laughs> I'm scared. I wonder why I decided to make the B really dark as it got closer, but then lighter as it got away, but then black. But then with the trees, I had them really light and they're gonna be dark. Probably should have picked a consistency with saturation. <laughs> Whoops. That looks cool. I like that. Okay, I wanted some lighter ones in the background, so I probably should have started with those. I don't know if I'll ever be used to markers like this for watercolor if I don't practice them, so I do feel super out of my comfort zone. But that's what these boxes are all about, right? I do not know how to use these markers. I'm such a noob. <laughs> it kind of looks cool, but like also it doesn't. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just realized I'm using bee paper and I drew bees on it. Oh, okay. I definitely like the purple on the brown and I knew I would. I was just hoping to keep it to a blue and yellow scheme, color scheme, but that's okay. I think it looks okay. How long in the comments have you been yelling at me to color this part in? I have to wonder. But look, I didn't forget. Okay, I think the last detail I want to add is the yellow windows. Yeah, well, they kind of look cool yellow. I wonder if I can attempt a gradient. Oh boy, famous last words. Oh gosh, I already regret it. Wait, can I just make a gradient with the marker? Why did I never think about that? Am I an idiot? Oh yeah, but you know what? It's actually destroying the paper. So honestly, the more I look at this illustration, the more it looks like 
it's underwater. I think it's because of the excessive use of blue. And especially like, it just looks like it's underwater more than it is a night sky. Well, here is our completed uh, metropolitan tree bug house. It was really fun and cute. I feel like I still don't have a grasp on watercolor markers, but I think I'm actually gonna sit here and doodle a couple of more things just to see if I can, I don't know, get a handle on them. Well, let's just, let's just doodle a little bit more and see what happens. I've decided that these art supplies just aren't for me. Thank you so much to Palletful for sending me this box. If you want your own, check out a link in the description. Um, thank you for suffering along with this video and watching. Stay golden, goodbye. And now a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons for all of their support. You guys are the best. If you want to be in the credits at the end of my videos, see secret sketches, coloring pages, early access, and more, check out my Patreon by clicking a link in the description. Thank you guys all so much for the support. Bye. Bye.